Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, once again, we thank your pastor for inviting us. Um, yeah, it's uh, been an exciting three months in our lives, and uh, we're just happy to be out and about and uh, um, happy to be here tonight. Acts 1.8. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Amen. Now the world is filled with two types of people. There are those who know the Lord Jesus as their personal Savior and those who do not. And the Bible calls them saved and lost. So we have those two types of people which group are you in? If you're lost, you need to be saved. Amen. Every person starts out as being lost. I did, you did. Everybody starts by being lost. We're all born in sin, shaped in iniquity through the fall of Adam. We, uh, each person is a sinner. Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And every sinner is going to hell. Uh, the man in Luke chapter 16, we talked about this morning, died and woke up in hell. Uh, Luke uh, 12 says that God has power to cast into hell. Amen. Don't fear the devil, fear God. Amen. Uh, 2 Peter 2.4 says God didn't spare the angels, but cast them down to hell. And so that hell has fire and torments and worms and darkness, and the description goes on and on. Uh, there are no round-trip tickets to hell. It's a one-way uh, street. And so if a person reaches hell, his case is hopeless, helpless, uh, eternal. And therefore, every person needs to be saved. Amen. And that's why Jesus came uh, he died in our place on the cross, and now a person can easily be saved. It wasn't easy before Christ died, but now it's easy because he's made the uh, sacrifice for us, and all we need to do is trust his finished work on the cross. Now, repent of our sins and trust him. Amen. The Bible makes it simple. He that believeth on the Son of hath life, everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son of God shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Amen. Turn with me over to Romans chapter 10. All of this is introduction. So let me lay the groundwork for what we want to look at tonight. The lost need to come to Christ to be saved. Amen. But how will they come to Christ? How will they... No to come to Christ. How's that going to happen? Well, either we're Calvinists who believe that salvation is all of God, and if folks are going to be saved, it's all up to him to, to effect all of it, and God chooses who will be saved and who will go to hell. Um, he imposes irresistible grace, and a man has to get saved he has no choice in the matter. Either we believe that heresy or we realize that we have a responsibility as his messengers Amen. to take others the gospel. Right, right, right. Paul reasons with us in Romans 10 and verse 14. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Or in other words, somebody's got to tell them. Amen. Some criticize the heresy of Calvinism, but they live their life like they believe it, like they have no concern for the lost. They live like a Calvinist. The Holy Spirit reminds, reminded us that the lost can only be saved as they believe, and they can only believe as they hear the gospel, and they can only hear if somebody tells them. Right. The people around you can only be saved if somebody tells them and they're around you. The someone who can tell them the gospel must be somebody who knows the gospel, who has been saved, and they know it. Well, who is that? After all, that's you and me. We know it. 
In a very real sense, the hope of this city is not in its mayor or its leaders. The hope of this city is in this room and in Bible-believing churches in your community. We must arise, therefore, from our busy lives and our sometimes spiritual sleep and many distractions to become alive to personal evangelism again. COVID's put everything almost in a, a lock hold, and we've got to be active in this. This is why we exist. Let's start here. None of us in this room, none of us, we're all in the same boat, none of us are caring enough for the lost. Amen. Can, I, can I hear amen? amen? None of us are caring enough. So there's no big eyes and little U's. None of us are. Certainly those who go out on soul winning and visitation show that they care, but our dearth of salvations at the altar and in homes in churches today is evidence of our lack of outreach. Amen. Maybe you rest in the fact that your church is doing okay, and your church definitely is. Attendance and and uh, uh, finances are up, whatever. Maybe you just feel rusty or awkward at giving the gospel. That can happen to us as Christians, can't it? I've experienced that. I'm sure you have. Um, Dear friends, each of us is in grave danger of becoming lukewarm, as the brother said tonight, and satisfied to let our neighbors just go on to hell. We run a danger. If they come to us and they ask questions, well, yeah, of course, we'll answer them, and, uh, but we're not going to make a special effort to invite or to win or to care for their soul. We're too busy for that. We're too bashful for that. We're too backward for that. We hide behind statements like, well, that's not my gift. I'm sorry, it's a command to all of us. That doesn't have anything to do with having a gift. Now, I know tonight that I'm preaching to myself as well as to you. Nobody knows that more than me. I pose to you that our Baptist churches are in a dangerous position. Every church that is dead today came to a crossroads in their life. And their people came in the crossroads and they didn't stir themselves to come alive again to personal evangelism. Brethren, every Christian must regain a fervor for souls. Everyone, this is within our grasp, it's commanded. We must regain a burden as our church, as a church for the lost. Again, I'm challenging myself and you tonight that as I preach on recapturing our drive for personal evangelism. Amen. Now let's bow for prayer and we'll get right into it. Our dear kind Heavenly Father, thank you for our time together. Yes, thank thank you. you for this church, the believers in this church. I'm so impressed uh, with a lot of things that I see here and I just glory in what you're doing in people's lives. Here's an important area though that may through all the good things may be getting pushed to the back shelf, yes, to the back burner. And I pray tonight that you'll help us to be very honest before you, teachable before you. As we hear your word, help us to allow our hearts to be challenged and to be honest and allow you to work in our hearts and re-stir us. Help us to recapture that burden for personal evangelism. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 Number one, consider these thoughts with me. What personal evangelism is not what it is not personal evangelism is not a decision for Christ personal evangelism is not winning a person by means of psychology or high-pressure door-to-door methods that's not it those who uh, do that get a person in the habit of saying yes yes answer this question yes yes they get used to it And then they try to trick the person into being saved. Listen, the salvation we have in Christ is so good, you don't have to trick anybody into it. 
We don't trick anybody into anything. Dear friend, uh, that is not personal evangelism. That is nothing but salesmanship brought into the church. We don't need salesmanship. We need to be filled with the Spirit, and we need the Word of God and a burden in our heart and caring for the lost. That's what we need. Where is the Holy Spirit involved? Uh, where he is involved, we don't have to trick anybody to make a decision. Rather, the Bible teaches that there must be two acceptances before a person can be saved. One, he must accept the fact that he's a sinner going to hell and in desperate need of a Savior. And then he must realize the fact that Christ is the only hope of salvation and accept him as his personal Savior and Lord. Personal evangelism is not... Therefore, a decision for Christ, uh, just like that. Personal evangelism is not living a good life. Most Christians seem to think that living a good life before others is o the only essential to winning souls. And if I do that, then I'm doing everything that I can for um, the lost one who's going to hell. They think that the good life will lead lost men to Christ. It's misnamed lifestyle evangelism. But there is no such thing. Amen. It's not lifestyle evangelism. It's true that if we're saved, we ought to live obedient to the Bible and live an example before the world. Right. And hopefully the world will see that. But that's still not evangelism yet until you open your mouth. Right. And so it's no substitute. Others are watching our lives, but there's more to caring for the lost than living uh, the life. That's a good start, but that's not enough. Personal evangelism is not faithfulness. Oh, thank God for faithfulness. It's required in stewards that a man be found faithful, uh, but that's not the end of everything. Right. It's, it, it's not a trade-off. Okay, I'm faithful, so I don't have to get involved in personal evangelism, or my faithfulness is my evangelism. That's not true. Scripturally, you can't back that up. Uh, Christian service begins with faithfulness, but it's not the end. And because you are faithful to church doesn't mean that you care for the lost. Right. Faithfulness is not personal evangelism. Personal evangelism is not your prayer time, but thank God that we can have a time with God Amen. in prayer. Uh, some say, well, they carry the burden for the lost. They pray. Dear friend, prayer is prayer. Amen. And evangelism is evangelism. Right. We all need to pray. And we ought to have somebody on our heart to pray for who's Amen. lost. Right. So we ought to have uh, prayer meetings like that. There's no substitute for prayer. And I'm not minimizing prayer. I have a prayer life. And we need prayer for the lost. And we need prayer to become better in our personal evangelism. But prayer is not a substitute for personal evangelism. Living the life, faithfulness, prayer, they're all commanded. They're all important. And we ought to do them, but they're still not personal evangelism. They don't substitute. They're not interchangeable terms. Amen. Personal evangelism is not getting someone to join the church. We know that. Church membership is for saved people. And all saved Amen. people ought to be involved in and join a local Bible-believing Baptist church. I believe that with all my heart. But getting a person to join is not personal evangelism. Personal evangelism is not serving in your ministry at the church, though you ought to serve in your ministry at Amen. the church. So some serve in the nursery, and some teach at Sunday school, and some sing, and uh, sing in the choir, sing specials, or play... Uh, music or uh, work around the church, maybe in the Christian school, in the sound room or rush, uh, ushering or decorating or many other things in your church that's needed, but that is not personal evangelism. Personal evangelism is not getting a person baptized. Baptism is an act of obedience that saved people do, and all saved people ought to be baptized by immersion and if you refuse uh, to be baptized by immersion, you're a disobedient child of God at the be very best. You need to be at the altar and you need to talk to your preacher and let him baptize you Amen. by immersion to be obedient to the command of Christ. 
But giving a person baptized is not personal evangelism. Baptize, a baptism and church membership are works that we do, and works we do cannot save a lost soul. Amen. So Ephesians 2, 8, 9 still rings in our ears, Amen. for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So none of these are personal evangelism. Check number one. Number two, what personal evangelism is. Oh, good. I'm glad we got to this point. The word soul refers to the innermost, the eternal part of the person. Winning refers to gaining of a soul for Christ. It's convincing or persuading that person to come to Christ. A soul is one when he or she sees their sinful, sinfulness the judgment on that, their destination, and their need of Christ as their Savior and Lord, and they pray to receive Christ as Savior. Amen. So that's when they're one. Did you know that evangelism comes from, the word evangelism comes from two words that mean an angel of wellness, or it means a messenger of good news. And so it is not you praying about it. Rather, it is you stepping out with the intention of witnessing to someone that you see is lost, Amen. of giving them a track, of giving them a gospel verbal witness, of giving them a CD, or writing a letter to them. Personal refers to the fact that each Christian is responsible to witness to the lost to take the gospel. So personal evangelism is not the pastor when he gives an altar call. It's not you being in church, though you should be in church. It's not you giving in the offering, though you should. It's not you having a missionary to a meal, though that's a wonderful thing to do. It's not you working on the building or singing in the choir or giving to the poor. All of these are fine things and we're commanded to do them, but when we're talking about personal evangelism, that's not it. Amen. All of these we should do. There's no doubt that we need them all, but none of them fulfill the Great Commission. And we know that. We know that. Amen. Rather, personal evangelism is you asking a person about spiritual things. Amen. Do you ever think about life after death? Amen. Or do you ever think about spiritual things? Or if something were to happen to you tonight, and you passed away, God forbid, are you certain that you'd go to heaven? Good. Or when you die and you approach the gate of heaven and they ask you why they should let you in, what, what are you going to say? Right. It opens the door for you to witness. Amen. If I could show you from the Bible in a few minutes how you could know um, that you would go to heaven before you die, would you do what the Bible says to do? The first step of personal evangelism, listen to me, the first step is going. Amen. Amen. There must be a going. Amen. Then there must be a giving right. or a talking or a giving of a track uh, to the lost about their need of Christ. It involves going. Most of them won't come to you. Right. I've only ever had one person come to me in all the time of my ministry. We had a whole family come in one time, and they saw something on TV, and it shocked them, and they came in, and they wanted to know how to be saved. That was it in my whole ministry. It involves us going, and it involves talking, and we communicate the truth to them of the gospel. So we see, first of all, what personal evangelism is not, and we see what it is. Number three, bringing the lost to God was Christ's purpose in coming. And we need to be reminded of this. In Luke 19 and verse 10, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. The nearest thing to the heart of God is the subject of reconciling man to himself. And so it was the focal, to, uh, focal point of his entire plan for the earth and for the ages. Amen. God was willing to make the supreme sacrifice to accomplish it in sending Amen. his only son to Praise earth. The Lord. Jesus Christ 
was willing to make the supreme sacrifice of leaving his throne in heaven and coming to earth in the humble stable and then living as a man for 33 years and then bleeding and suffering and dying a cruel death on the cross. Why would he do all of that? So that we could be saved. Amen. So that we wouldn't have to go to hell. Amen. But he also did it not just for us. He did it for our neighbors. Right. He did it for our relatives. Right. Your brother, right. your sister, your mother, your father, your son, your daughter. He did it for your co-workers. Amen. God the Father and God the Son. And much of the work of the Holy Spirit is spent convicting the world of sin. Right. Did you know that the Trinity is busy after souls? Praise the Lord. He, the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Amen. If man doesn't need to be saved, why has the Trinity spent so much time and effort on their salvation? That's good. That's the good. truth is man does need to be saved. Amen. This is important to the Father. It's important to the Son. Amen. It's important to the Holy Spirit. And they've gone out of their way to accomplish it. I propose that to you today that they have deputized us Amen. to take the gospel to the lost. Amen. Hmm. They have deputized. I like that thought. Personal evangelism must take on a higher priority in every one of our lives. Amen. We must care for the lost that Jesus died for. We must seek those our God cares for that he has put in our pathway Amen. and around us. We're the witness. If you have a lost brother, mother, father, sister, daughter, son, aunt, cousin, co-worker, friend, neighbor, and it could go on. What is your plan to point them to Christ? Do you have a plan? Amen. We can't save them. The Holy Spirit convicts them. Christ saves them. But we can point them in the right direction. Amen. Give them the truth. So recapturing our drive for personal evangelism. First, what personal evangelism is not. Per what personal evangelism is. Uh, go and tell. Thirdly, bringing the lost to God was, uh, was Christ's purpose in coming, all the trinities involved in it. And finally tonight, evangelism is a Bible doctrine. Amen. This is not something that is we, a smorgasbord and you can take it if you want to or not. No, this is a Bible doctrine we need to not only believe but practice. Amen. In Genesis, God is calling out Adam to Adam who sinned and says, Adam, where art thou? He's seeking him. In the book of Revelation, it ends with one last urgent plea. And the spirit of the bride say, come. And let him that heareth say, come. And let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. Amen. Between Genesis and Revelation, personal evangelism is taught <laughs> by precept, by command, and by example. And that will be the rest of the message. And it won't take long. First, precept. Precept is a general rule intended to regulate behavior and thought. It's a general rule. Personal evangelism is a Bible precept. Amen. Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 30, you probably have committed to memory. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. Amen. It's a precept. The apostle Paul, who seemed to reap more fruit than any other man, explained how he did it. And he says in 1 Corinthians 9, 22, to the weak became I as weak that I might gain the weak. I'm, I am made all things to all men that I might by all means save some. He was going after souls Amen. every way that he could. That's why he was successful. Even David in the Old Testament uh, what this. He was described as the man after God's own heart. He wanted to get his heart right with God so that he could get back to the main business of reaching the lost. Amen. You say, oh, are you sure about that? 
Yeah, I am sure about Amen. it. Let me read it to you. Psalm 51.10, his repentant psalm. Uh, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit in me. Cast me not away from thy presence. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Uh, uphold me with a free spirit. We know all of those, but did you know the next verse? Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Amen. He wanted to get right with God so that God could use him again to bring others to God. Maybe somebody here needs the same heart that David had to get themselves thoroughly Amen. right with God so that they can get back on the firing line of personal evangelism. Amen. Maybe we've been dilly-dallying in the world a little bit too much. Personal evangelism is a precept. Secondly, personal evangelism is a Bible command. In Matthew 28, 19, the Great Commission says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And it goes on from there. Amen. Mark was compelled to write it this way, Mark 16, 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Boy, that's clear. That's a command. Luke didn't leave the command out either. He says in Luke 24, 47, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. Amen. And of course, we know that Luke wrote Acts and he wrote the text that we read tonight. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you Amen. and ye shall be witnesses unto me. The tender-hearted apostle John was not to be left out as he recorded these words of Jesus for us. In John 20, 21, then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. As. As my Father hath sent me. As means in the same manner as uh, my Father has sent me. How did God send Jesus? He sent Jesus to seek and to save that which was lost. Praise the Lord. So just as the Father sent Jesus to seek and to save that which was lost, so he's sending us, Christ is sending us in the same manner to seek and to save that which is lost. Amen. The key is that we're sent. Right. Jesus has dispatched us. He's sent us. Amen. What's he sent us to do? The same thing. Seek the lost. This is our purpose. Right. To seek the lost. Amen. We are ambassadors representing another country. That's heaven. Amen. With the message of our king. The Lord. That's Jesus. Absolutely. And we're pilgrims here. We, we have another land. We live in a foreign land, but our home is far away. But it seems to be getting a little closer, doesn't it? We tell the inhabitants of the land that our king, what our king tells us to say. Our king sends us to bear witness to the good news that men and women don't have to go to hell in their sins, that they can be saved. And so we try to win the lost because we're commanded to do it, because it's a Bible precept. Amen. And finally, personal evangelism is shown by Bible example. Amen. The Bible is filled with numbers of examples of personal work. Remember Philip with the Ethiopian eunuch. Right. He came alongside, answered his questions. Paul with the jailer. Amen. Remember that? Tremendous Amen. story. I love reading that. Peter and John with the lame man. Amen. Of course, Jesus was ever at the task in his earthly ministry of personal evangelism, he won Nicodemus. Amen. Zacchaeus, come out of that tree. And he won Zacchaeus. Blind Bartimaeus. Blind Bartimaeus. The woman at the well is a big story in Amen. John chapter 4, I think it is. Amen. Nathaniel. The thief on the cross. The and others that we could name. Here it is. Here's the message tonight. God wants us to go out of our way to meet people that he went out of his way for. Amen. He wants us to go out of our way to tell them 
the gospel. Amen. This is my assignment and yours. Amen. How are we doing? Or more poignantly, how are you doing? How am I doing? Amen. Who are you personally burdened to see come to Christ? Who has the Lord laid on your heart to come to Christ? Praise the Lord. Shame on us if it's nobody. Right. We need to get on our prayer, na- prayer bones, get alone with God. Amen. Say, God, lay somebody on my heart. Amen. In your life, who could you invite? Who could you witness to? Who are you praying for? Amen. How long has it been since you persuaded someone to come to church? Right. Or given a tract to someone? Amen. Or a CD of preaching? Brethren, how can we truly say that we have a clear conscience about doing the will of God in this area of our lives and ignore the command, the precept, the example. Christian, we are brethren. We're on the same time, the same side. From time to time, we have lapses of memory of what we ought to be about. We get off target. I do. I'm talking to, about all of us. We're all in the same boat here. Amen. But this is something that is vital Amen. It is the crux. Amen. And we can't leave the crux out of our church. Amen. We have to be convicted about it. Right. When the pastor calls visitation, I mean, it ought, we ought to perk up. Amen. In our prayer time, there ought to be somebody on our heart. Amen. We ought to be asking the Lord, who can we witness to? Amen. Who can I invite? Who can I give a track to? Right. Who can I give a gospel witness to? We all need to be reminded of what God expects. Tonight, God is reminding us all to recapture our drive for personal evangelism. 